Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ayyul Ahbab continuing on in our treaties the study of Marat al-Ukhra Rifqan Ahlul Sunnati Rifqan Ahlul Sunnati bi Ahlul Sunnah Ahlul Sunnah be gentle with one another We left off where Alama Shaykh Abdul Masin al-Abbad said what is regretful is that recently the situation has become worse with the targeting of some, uh, some of Ahl Sunnah with further criticism and with them being declared innovators. And with what has resulted from that, from mutual boycotting. The same questions are then repeated. What is your opinion regarding so-and-so, who has been declared an innovator by so-and-so? Should I read particular books from a particular person who has been declared an innovator by so-and-so? Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the shaykh for the the greatness of this treaty is because he articulated the frustrations and the problems that we've been dealing with for years, in fact, for many, many years. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and our brothers and sisters who test the people with regards to particular personalities and individual. And based upon people's response and answer, they make a hukum upon that individual and then based upon that hukum yataratab alayhi al -amur. that based upon the ruling that they give they make upon a, a particular individual then there are other consequences that happen for example they may boycott them for example they and meaning not to give them salams no longer sitting with them not even smiling with them uh, just many, many things. Even some people to such extreme, maybe they don't pray behind uh, other individuals because they think they're a hizbi or they think they're this or they think they're that. So it, it causes firqa, it causes divisions. And these are problems between Ahl Sunnah. These are problems between Ahl Sunnah. And I've traveled to some lands, I've seen how Ahl Sunnah responds. Some of these problems manifest in places like Indonesia and Ethiopia. In what I observed in Ethiopia from our brothers there, that some of, a, a group from amongst our brothers, and they're very small, well, alhamdulillah, in number, but they went to such an extreme that they regard that the fact that if you wear pants, that that be, is a sign of hisbiya. Wearing pants is a sign of hisbiya. Where did, you, did they come up with this? Where did they come up with this when the major scholars don't say anything like this? And it goes against the mafhum, mafhum of the, the text, and it goes against the qawaid in principles uh, that are established by the fuqaha in this religion. The asl al-libas, ibah, that the origin of any clothing that you wear is that it's permissible unless there's a nas from the sharh, from the, from the sharh, that shows that that clothing or that action or what have you is impermissible. This is regarding to mu'amalat and clothing and things like this. But when it comes to worship, acts of worship, then the asal of worship is that is is um, that it is impermissible unless you have a text from the Quran and the Sunnah to show that that act of worship is mashru, that it was uh, the Prophet والسلام, did that act of, of worship. So the point being, Ayyul Ahbab, is the fitna do ha, has spread worldwide, and testing and asking, and and the 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 consequences of testing and asking about individuals, and causing harm in many many communities. Sometimes someone is new to the dawah. I know a particular individual who was a Sufi, and then they went from being a Sufi to being a Tekfiri, from my locality. Then Allah favored this person to go from that to being from Ahl Sunnah to being Salafi and spreading books, buying books and selling them Salafi books. Wallahi may Allah bless the brother. And he told me about his experience. He traveled to one of the uh, particular places in America. He came to some, and this is when he was new to the Salafi Dao, which is the Dao of Ahl Sunnah to Jama'ah. And he came across uh, some of his brothers and, and, and and they began testing him about the individual we mentioned before in the previous lecture. We mentioned uh, uh, Abu Hassan Ma'adi, okay, 
who is a very well-known Hizbi uh, in the Arab world. And so the point being is they tested this brother who was new to the Dao about Abu Hassan. What's your position about Abu Hassan Ma'adi? Ma the brother said, well, I have never heard of him. I have never listened to him. I don't know. And they boycotted him for this. And this is a true story. He told me this from his, his own mouth. Ayyul Ahbab, I'm curious to know even the level of knowledge of those individuals who would do such, practice such uh, extreme, uh, extremeness and ghafla, in fact. You know, this is just a pure type of ignorance and foolishness that you would test the people in a land where the people have no idea about the individual nor do they speak the same language. Here, this is Abu Hassan's fitna. Primarily, was a fitna amongst the Arabs in the Arab world. And those people who uh, speak the Arabic language who can, you know, are affected by that. But his, his effect was not that uh, immense in the English-speaking world. Possibly in the UK, their situation's a bit different. But in America, his Dao was not very widespread. And of course, you would need a translator if you don't know the language, to even know who he was and to even get in those issues and the issues of his mistakes and, and so and so. But the point being, Wallahu Musta'an, is that this brother who was new to the Dao could have easily been scared away from the Dao because of this harsh and foolish treatment from those who lem yafaqahum fi deen, that Allah didn't give them fiqh and understanding of the religion. Because the Prophet والسلام, said, man yirid Allahu bihi khayran yafaqahum fi deen. Whenever Allah grants uh, good, once good for a person, he gives them understanding of the religion. So that was the real that those individuals had no fiqh fideen. Because here they were testing a brother who doesn't speak the language, doesn't, doesn't even know anything about the brother or anything else, what is position, and they want to know a position from him, so that way they can place him either in a category with or against them. And they chose to do the latter, that he's against them for a lack of knowledge. SubhanAllah. Who was the one who was foolish in that? Uh, uh, example, Wallah Mustang. Alama uh, Sheikh Abdul Masin said, Heavenly Allah, some of the small students of knowledge, look at this, this is exactly what I was just talking about, more or less. Some of the small students of knowledge will say to others similar to them, What is your position regarding somebody who so and so has declared to be an innovator? It is imperative that you have a position, otherwise, we will abandon you. This is what people say. And this is exactly what happened to the brother. This matter is worse when it occurs from some of them from European countries. There exists within these countries some students from Ahlul Sunnah possessing little knowledge and are in immense need of seeking beneficial knowledge and remaining safe from the fitna of boycotting due to blindly following criticisms. Allahu Akbar. This Alama broke it down for us that we have a, a, a greater need in America and in Europe to seek knowledge, not busy ourselves with these issues. And the fact that some brothers blindly follow maybe Sheikh so-and-so, who might be one of, one of our mashayikh from Ahl Sunnah, makes a fatwa, makes a hukum on an individual. And then the brothers take that fatwa as if it's revelation, and if you go against it, you are not from Ahl Sunnah anymore. This is a masib al kubra And this is what the Sheikh is, is talking about here, Wallahu Musta'an. In reality, this methodology, look at the Sheikh said, he said it's a methodology. In reality, this methodology is similar to the way of Akhwan al-Muslimin, subhanAllah, regarding which their founders said, your call is more deserving that the people come to it and that you yourself should not go to anybody. This is because your call contains all the good and all others are not, are not free from deficiencies. This was a state, statement of uh, Hassan al-Banna. He also said, our position with regards to other opposing calls that have arisen in this time, divided people's hearts and challenged their thoughts, is that we weigh all of these other calls against our call. So whatever is in conformity to it, we welcome. And whatever opposes our call, then we are free from it. Of course, this is in the situation, Ayyah Abab, we have to put everything on the scale of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's our call. So we don't make the, the example ourselves. For example, I can't say if I see an individual and I see that they are not uh, calling to Islam like I call to Islam, or they're not doing the measurements using the, what, the way I do it or, or something like this in a manner that is pleasing to me, I cannot uh, 
make a uh, a hukum, a ruling uh, based upon measuring to myself and what I call, except that if I call to purely to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have to put their calls and measure it upon the Sunnah, not measure it to ourselves and our group and our group of brothers and sisters that we sit with and that we uh, gather together and have are in agreement with. But in fact, we have to measure everything by the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sheikh then said, it is better for those students instead of occupying themselves with this fitna, that they remain busy with reading beneficial books of Ahl Sunnah, especially the books of the contemporary scholars, such as the legal verdicts of our Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz, the Committee for Research and Verdicts, the books of Sheikh uh, bin Uthaymeen, and other than them. By doing this, they will acquire knowledge that is beneficial, and they will remain safe from rumor mongering, mongering and backbiting. Some of their brothers from Ahl Sunnah. This is imperative. If you busy yourself with beneficial knowledge, you won't have time to busy yourself with others. You, you, you really won't have time. If, you, if we spent a portion of our time going through maybe just one or two of these books. In fact, I'm, I'm looking at just two books right now. I'm trying to, two or three books that I'm looking at right now. And trying to study and revise and have a couple of durus that I attend. That alone keeps me busy. I really don't have time to look, spend time going through the internet and looking at someone else's mistakes or something. So read beneficial books, sitting beneficial lessons. If you're in places where there's no lessons in your masjid, there's so many on the internet. I know there's many lessons from uh, students of knowledge from Ahl Sunnah, from the UK, from America, from various European countries in various languages that you can benefit from if you don't know the Arabic language. There's so much out there. There's no excuse anymore. But benefit yourself with those durus, with going through the books, the, the explanations from the scholars. Don't benefit yourself. Don't spend your time with just listening to refutations only. Refutations is a part of the deen, but it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone to engage in those affairs. So that's not going to help you get up for fajr. That's not going to help you avoid uh, zina and, and pornography. That's not going to help you to quit lying and cheating and stealing. But rectifying your character is going to come through durus and come through taqwa Allah and trying to practice what you learned. And that, ayyul ahbab, is the ilm al nafiyah Then the shaykh said, Hafadullah Ta'ala, Ibn al-Qayyim said, From the strange matters is that it is easy for a person to protect himself from eating unlawful food. SubhanAllah, this is so profound and this is so true, which Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim said. Again, from the strange matters is that it is easy for a person to protect himself from eating unlawful food, oppression, adultery, stealing, drinking alcohol, and looking at that which is permissible, impermissible. And yet it is difficult for the same person to stop his tongue moving to the extent that you will see a person who is known for being religious, uh, uh, ascetic, and known for his worship, and yet despite this, he will utter a statement which is detested by Allah, not paying any attention to it. Due to the statement, he then debases himself to a level similar to the distance between the East and the West. How many times have you seen a man who stays away from lewd actions and oppression, yet his tongue defames the honor of those who are alive and also deceased? He does not show any concern with regards to what he says. Allahu Akbar. That's, that's very... Uh, powerful. And then Sheikh Abdul Masin said, if speech occurs from a scholar from Ahl Sunnah, that is general, and other speech that is more specific, we should maintain good thoughts about that scholar by giving him the benefit of the doubt and understand his general statements in light of his more specific statements. Allahu Akbar. That is such a powerhouse statement that the Sheikh said because this we do not see practiced by many, indi many individuals. Illa men rahimullah. Illa men rahimullah. So we only see this practice by those individuals who Allah has favored and had mercy upon them to be able to practice this. That they actually, when they hear something from a, a scholar, or they hear something from a student of knowledge, they look at all of their aqidah and all of their belief. And they and, and if there's something that's general, something that's general, that perhaps could be misunderstood or misinterpreted, they look to their specific statements. 
to understand the, the, the general statement, to know, okay, I know he doesn't hold uh, the view of this. And this is an exact example I can think of a particular brother, a die in the West, who a lot of people were benefiting from, but certain of our brothers took his statements to the ulama, some general statements that he had made many years ago. They compiled the statements, instead of going to him, they compiled these statements and then took it to ulama in Saudi Arabia to get statements, to get rulings passed against this individual, to get him to stop making da'wah, to get him to come into line and to destroy his reputation. In fact, they did. But Allah still raised him to be able to do da'wah in the law, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point being is some of the statements he made were general. And from knowing this individual personally myself and having sat in gatherings of, having gone to Durus with the individual and, 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 and knowing the individual, I know their Aqidah with regards to some of these general issues. I know his Aqidah. I know the books he studies from, the ulama he takes from. But instead of those individuals looking and taking all of his statements, they took those statements which are general without taking the, the details from other statements to show which illustrate more accurately the individual's creed and stance on particular issues of creed and minhaj. And instead they took the mubhim, that which is open to interpretation, and gave it the most inappropriate interpretation. This is a big problem we have around the world. This isn't just in the West. I've seen it in the Arabic books as well many times in some certain refutations where they're refuting, uh, a particular scholar is refuting another scholar, and subhanAllah, and because Allah favored me to study with that particular scholar, scholar that's being refuted, I know that that's not his creed, because I've heard it countless times in his lectures, and I, ha and I have it recorded. I have those dudes recorded. Those recorded dudes are on the internet, they're in his books, they're, in his, they're on his tongue. But they take a general statement, and then they infer what this individual is saying. Instead of taking his general statement and, and, and uh, looking to his more specific statements to deduce what this individual believes and in their creed and their menhaj. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.